I was applying on jobs that I felt at the time were sort of beneath me and, you know, things that I would have done 10 years earlier and that I've moved on from and, and I wasn't even getting a call back or I would get an interview, but then nothing after that. And I was like, oh, this is not looking well. And um, I did get, I did land at some point like a, a part-time job, but I was very miserable. And it was the first time in like, I don't know how many years at that point that I had felt miserable at my job. Like before that, like, you know, when you, you've got a job while you're going to school, for example, obviously you're not in love with that job. You're just doing it because you need a job. And I sort of felt like I was getting that feeling again. And I was like, oh, like, I can't do this. Like for me, my job needs to be, I need to enjoy going to, going to work and doing what I do. And um, it was, yeah, I was, so through that, I was sort of, Basically, my mindset was if no one's going to hire me, then I'm going to hire myself. I'm going to find a way to make my own my own thing. Hello, 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 everybody. It is Abby back with you for another episode of Modern Day Unicorn. And today I have a special guest that I'm ever so grateful for his time and his talents. His name is Idris, right? In French, but, you know, us Americans, we just simplify everything and call him Idris. But he's also affectionately known as E. Um, and he is... Uh, a phenomenal individual who I'm going to let introduce himself and we will unpack more of what he does. So, E, thank you so much for joining us. Please tell us a little bit more about you, where you're from, and what you do. Yes, well, thank you, uh, thank you Abby, for having me. And um, yeah, my name is, uh, like you said, Idris uh, Toussaint, actually, from a uh, French mom and a uh, Haitian dad. So, um, and um, I was born in Montreal, Canada. I'm from Canada, but I live in Australia now, and I'm a uh, Professional sports videographer. Yeah. Professional sports videographer. And for those uh, listeners that know me, excuse me, those that I've, I've been transitioning into photography and videography over the past couple of years and just recently went full time. So his channel, um, Beyond the Game TV, correct? Yeah, well, we actually, it's funny because uh, last, well, since this week, I sort of revamped everything and I just dropped the, the TV, mm. so now it's Beyond the Game. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, each channel Beyond the Game, as, as you scour through YouTube, um, you find different influencers or, uh, or channels that encourage you through your, um, through your journey and give you, I, I've always been looking for like step by step you know, ways and tutorials in each channel Beyond the Game has been influential for the sports side of things and even just on the production value. So that's one reason why I gravitated to your channel. So could you please kind of take us maybe to, I'd love to know a little bit more, I don't want to say education, but prior to this life that you live now, who were you or what did you do? And kind of we'll, we'll figure out how you transitioned in, into the, you know, who you are today. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a long journey because I'm, I'm a bit old now. But um, <laughs> basically, I've like I've got half siblings, but I, I grew up um, uh, as an only child with, with my mom. And um, so my two things really were, were sports and um, television. I watch a lot of TV and I'm, I'm not necessarily someone who just like stand by and watch um, I usually want to get involved. So from a young age, like I always wanted to sort of work in TV. I wasn't one to be in front of the camera, but I really wanted to be involved either as a cameraman or an editor or something. And um, so that's what I ended up studying, uh, sort of did, um, well, it's a bit different education in, in, in Canada, but it was sort of a three year thing after high school. and. Um, after I was done with that, I started working in television and sort of gradually working my way through and getting a bit more, uh, you know, better jobs um, going from starting from the assistant's assistant to eventually becoming a, a, a video editor. And which was great until I eventually got a job with the Montreal Canadiens, which is an NHL team. And that's when I first started doing like sports specific uh, content which I, I loved because it went back to my original love of sports. And also I, I really love music as well. And when you work for a sports team that owns an arena, that means you get involved as well as a video editor anyway, you get involved with all the concerts and stuff because I was doing like promo ads and, and all the TV ads you'd see and uh, to promote you know, all the concerts coming up. So, um, so yeah, it was the perfect job for, for, for me. I really loved it and it was the first time that 
um, I realized that because my job, as much as I loved doing my job in, in television, that the shows that I was working on never really appealed to me in terms of like what the subject of the show was. So it was the first time that the content that I was editing was just was talking directly to me and I was really involved and I really wanted to to make it great for people who just like me appreciate that sport as much as I do. So once you get sort of that feeling, you just you don't really want to let it go. So <laughs> I just sort of stuck to, to sport uh, from from then on, really. So, um, so yeah, from from then I just uh, I was a, I was an editor with the Montreal Canadiens, but when I left to move to Australia because I, I met an, uh, an Australian um, young lady, which I, I married, and um, and yeah, moved here and I just kept kept going with sports. And so I, I consider it like a blessing that you are able to figure out, not necessarily figure out, but kind of establish a lane from a younger age. Um, I know many people kind of just, you know, nomadically, you know, waver through life. I know I was one. I didn't want to go to college. <laughs> I went to college because I was, I'm the oldest of all of my siblings and I wanted to give them, you know, kind of a path or we're told yeah. it's the right thing to do. Um, but the, I, I found myself, my undergrad is in sports, entertainment, and event management. Okay. Um, and it was before, you know, I found a camera or editing software and things of that nature. But um, I can only imagine, you know, what I could possibly do or be or, you know, and I don't regret anything if I did pick up a camera back then. But um, for, for the sake of, I'm saying all of that for the sake of you having that exposure to it a little bit earlier and knowing when to say, this is it, I like this, yeah. I'm gonna stick with it. But then also being okay to, to make changes and shifts and. And so I, I'd like to ask you, um, being that you know you, you found your wife and everything like that and moved to Australia after kind of having what you would consider a dream job, maybe not the dream job, what was it like transitioning from Canada to Australia and how did you kind of get back into the groove of finding your next opportunity in a new country? Yeah, it's interesting because um, I, when I was working for the Canadians, it was very much so a dream job for me, like I was seeing all the hockey games I wanted to see. I was involved in UFC events and things like that. I would go to all the concerts I wanted to go in Montreal. I had VIP access and, you know, I was a young 20 something. I was living the dream. So, um, so I always thought leaving that, that job would have to be a very personal, only a very personal reason would lead me to leave that job, which is exactly what happened. And, um, moving to Australia, um, it was a bit weird. Well, at first, actually, what happened, because I still, you know, we're talking to 2010, 2011. So, you know, social media video existed, but it wasn't necessarily something that you would make a living out of. So you very much so want, needed to be involved in television somehow if you wanted to make a career out of video production, unless you're doing like weddings or corporate stuff. But um, so, yeah, so I wanted to stick to sports and somehow... I managed to find this ad for a job that was actually another dream dream job of mine, which was to basically produce TV shows that were exclusive to sports. So I was like, geez. And I actually got the job and and yeah, I was living the dream again and just move. I thought it was gonna be hard because I was starting from scratch. Like all my references from from Canada didn't mean anything to these people. They had never heard of anything that I've ever done. And it was just I didn't really know how that was gonna pan out, but um but yeah, it just it just worked out very easily, and I was very excited, and ben, met like a bunch of other people from around the world that was sort of in a similar situation because that particular company was making shows for basically international market, so they really they welcome people from from different countries, and um, and yeah, that was great. But they weren't really that good at selling, so their shows were really good, but um, it cost them a lot of money to produce, and then they were struggling to sell them and. Long story short, a year later, the place shut down. So, um, so then I become an, I became unemployed again, and and that's when I really, uh, you know, felt uh, the impact of yeah, being in a new country with no real options because I was looking obviously at jobs again, and um, that time it was much harder <laughs> than than the first time, and I was I was questioning like what was going to happen because I was applying on jobs that. 
I felt at the time were sort of beneath me and, you know, things that I would have done 10 years earlier and that I've moved on from and, and I wasn't even getting a call back or I would get an interview, but then nothing after that. And I was like, oh, this is not looking well. And um, I did get, I did land at some point like a, a part-time job, but I was very miserable. And it was the first time in like, I don't know how many years at that point that I had felt miserable at my job. Like before that, like, you know, when you're, you've got a job while you're going to school, for example, obviously you're not in love with that job. You're just doing it because you need a job. And I sort of felt like I was getting that feeling again. And I was like, oh, like, I can't do this. Like for me, my job needs to be, I need to enjoy going to, going to work and doing what I do. And um, it was, yeah, I was so through that, I was sort of, Basically, my mindset was if no one's going to hire me, then I'm going to hire myself. I'm going to find a way to make my own my own thing. And that's when I started looking at starting my own production company. So basically um, talking to clubs here in Australia and about their video needs because the, the video, the social media videos were sort of ramping up. Facebook was starting to now have videos and, and I don't think Instagram existed yet but it was coming and um so yeah so so i was sort of at the right time at the right place where i started this new thing where i was approaching clubs with video ideas stuff that they've never done before so at the beginning it was completely new to them so they weren't really too excited but once i got one club on board and then a second and everyone else wanted to do the same thing because it was the the hot new thing in town and so it really from then on it it, it blew up pretty pretty quickly so the business went well and and then I started to be stuck in that world where I'm doing everything for my clients so my own sort of creativity my own ideas you know all my videos have some of myself in them but I felt like it was always sort of chipped away a bit uh, a bit uh, more and more actually so um so that's how beyond the game sort of came to life where I I reached a point where I was like you know what it would be fun to do something that's really just me, well, me and like other people that was that were helping me as well, but uh, just about us and what we want to do and, and tell our own stories. And I was a big fan of like ESPN 30 for 30s and things like that. And I thought like if I can make like shorter versions of of those type of documentaries for, for the web, it could be a cool, it was more of a blog thing back then. Um, it was like 2015, I think, um, and it developed into mm. a YouTube channel a bit later on. And then I started talking a bit more about myself and what I do for a living and the sports videography behind the scenes aspect of it. And yeah, now uh, here we are. <laughs> so you, you've said it, you said a lot of key things for me that I kind of want to unpack a little bit more. Um, so when you were in that transitional phase trying to find another job and you couldn't find another job um, a lot of people yeah do go into the misery of just working something just to have it mm -hmm. I think in, in many in many cases because they just need money yeah. um, but you taking the opportunity to go ahead and say okay I'm, I'm gonna do this for myself I'm gonna approach clubs and things of that nature to do this for myself um, what was that I mean I know it was a while ago but what was that process like for you to be like okay what were the steps that you had to take to say I'm just going to be me and I'll figure this out along the way. Well, I thought I would sort of edge my bet. So basically, like I said, I had this part time job going. So at least I had some sort of income. And of course, I had my, my wife who was sort of there as well, you know, to to, <laughs> to support me in a way. Like, uh, so I wasn't alone and sort of living paycheck to paycheck and, and struggling. So I was lucky in that sense. But, um, but yeah, I was sort of my plan was I've got this part time job that allows me to pay for what I need to pay. And then also because it's a part time job gives me a lot of time the rest of the week it was three days a week, I think, to to do my thing. Mm -hmm. So I would spend three days making money and the rest of the week just building my dream, basically, and uh, and working at it and putting, you know, uh, teasers and, and hype reels together that I could show potential clients and documents that I could and I was trying to get meetings with people and and, and when I did get meetings then I would try to make them fit at a time that, that <laughs> around my around my job that, that would work and and um, and yeah I got a few I got a, a bunch of them that that led to, to nowhere and I just kept going and, and eventually met 
the right people who, who understood what I was trying. It was also about me understanding the, the Australian market as well, because I was brand new to, to all of that. Like I'd been there for a year, but I'd never really been to a lot of soccer games or rugby games, things like that. I didn't really understand exactly what their needs were. I was just looking at their websites and, and figuring out what their problem was online. But I, after that, realized that maybe that wasn't the best avenue and you, that's why I've, I've started doing a lot of content for the for the games like at the on the jumbotron like this the entertainment that you see at the stadium because that's what they were investing money in at the time like uh, investing money on social media wasn't a thing back then so it's understanding the market mm. understanding when there's where there's like a where, where there's a hole where there's something where you can help and then sort of making the most of that and and, and at the same time uh, yeah sort of being smart about obviously trying to uh, you know make some money but also save some time for myself to keep working on my my ultimate goal that's always been my thing like I, I had a job since I was like 11 like I always had something going that assured me that I could sort of if if something happens I can you know I, I, I've got money there to help me get through things um, but um, but at the same time it's always in the back of my mind, I'm doing this. I'm not enjoying what I'm doing, but I'm doing it for a, b a greater cause, if that makes sense. Mm. I, and you know what? I, I find that in today's world with social media, like in full force, that we do, we, we are turning out a lot more entitled creators who's yeah. saying, you know, I I deserve this. I have 100,000 followers and, you know, I, I, I deserve to do this for you, but you know, we're not going into it with like a servant, you know, mindset or attitude and how I can help this individual for helping them. Not saying you need my help because I have all this influence and I have all this talent, mm. but truly finding those individuals who are there not for themselves to say, you know, and I think that's one thing that we're, we're missing to where we are doing our homework for the people and the companies and the clubs that we want to work for, but from a, a standpoint of service and not selfishness. It's like, oh, I just want tickets for the Serena. So if I go work there, then I, I get all the access that I want. Yeah. Um, hmm. No, I agree. I think like, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of people, yeah, they, they want something. So they'll, they'll do what they think they have to do to sort of get there. But at no point they sort of ask themselves, what do these people actually need from me? Like I get people reach out to me all the time, like in my DMs and stuff. And, and say like they want to work in the NBA, for example, and and you know what should I do to to, to get there, basically, and and but sometimes like obviously timing is, is a huge huge thing. If they're not hiring, there's not much you can do. But um, but it's also about because I remember like specifically one one kid who was living somewhere in, in Europe, and and I was like, dude, you're gonna have to move if you want to work in the NBA. Like no one's gonna hire you from Europe. Like there's there's NBA Europe, there's things you can do over there, but if you want to work for a club, and he was trying to justify that, you know, these days you can work, um, you know, via, you, you could basically do the work from home and stuff. And I was like, yeah, there's certain parts of the job that you could do from home, but like you, at the moment you're trying to convince an NBA team to change their whole way of doing things just to fit your narrative. So. I, yeah, at the end of the day, and, and, and it works the same way, like with what you're talking about, about education and stuff. Like for for me, the, the channel, once I sort of made the change to, to sports videography more than just telling stories with documentaries and things, it was about, because I, I, I realized that when you looked for sports videography, because there's tons of videography, you know, channels on YouTube, like and they're high quality stuff, no complaints there. But when if you're looking for sports specifically, back four or five years ago, there was nothing. There was literally, there was mm -hmm. absolute, that was probably like one video here or there that a videographer made about sports, but in terms of a channel dedicated to it, there was nothing. So I thought, oh, you know, I can, it, it would help me as well do videos more consistently because now I don't have to rely on having an athlete involved or something. I can just do videos myself. And, and I thought it was a nice sort of niche to, to to look into and give people something and, and, and straight away like the feedback sort of came in and positive comments and questions and all that stuff and and now there's even a few more channels doing the same thing so yeah I just love 
I just love the fact that it's becoming a, a thing. And even like we've got a Facebook group as well for like sports videography. And, and now it's got about three to over, no, it's, yeah, 3,500 uh, members, I think. So it's, oh, wow. it's cool to see that like, yeah, people have sort of, you know, join in. Because from a money perspective, it's not something that even if I had like 100,000 uh, subscribers, there's not that many companies, there's not that many businesses that sell products specifically to sports videography. So it's not like there's a company that's going to say, oh, you're a sports videographer, like we need to work with you because, it's, you know, we've got a product just for you. So businesses usually that sell videography stuff, they're looking for videographers and that's a much bigger you know, picture and I'm a very small sort of, you know, very small fish in that big ocean. So, um, so yeah, it's not really a money thing. Well, I think that's the, also the importance of kind of like niching down, as you said, being a sports videographer and providing content for that so that you're not overstretching yourself with things that are not, you know, always relevant to you. Mm. So you being able to say like, okay, this is what I do. And this is how I do it. Another, you know, element of the way that you're serving our community and saying, oh, like, you know, I do this. I know there's people that are interested in doing this. This is how I'm getting it done. And I saw that you recently released, like, you know, <laughs> the, the effects and sound effects package for videography. I, I have so many, like, swooshes mm -hmm. and hits and, and things of that nature to where if you needed something sports specific, you had to go create it yourself or you hope that you can find something random. So yeah. um, I wanted to ask, um, how long have you had your YouTube channel now? Um, I think it's, well, it was created when we started the, the website, or the, the, the blog sort of, the idea originally was to do like a blog that has like videos. Um, so that was in 2015. So I think we, we created the YouTube channel back then just to secure the name. And we would, as we were putting videos on the website, eventually we would sort of dump them on YouTube just because, you know, maybe someone will sort of fall onto it on, on YouTube and just find us that way. But it wasn't something that I was actively trying to promote or, or grow or anything like that. And it's only in 2018, I think, towards the end of 2018, that I really started, I started watching a lot more YouTube, a lot more vlogs, things like that, sort of an, an understanding the platform a lot more and realizing that it wasn't just cat videos and, you know, just little stupid stuff and, and thought like, oh, yeah, if I'm going to produce videos, it makes a lot more sense to, to focus on that than to try to convince everyone on social media to come to my little website that they don't know anything about. So, um, so that's what I decided to do. And, um, and also that's when I started doing a lot more sports videography as well, because up until then doing only documentaries and stories about teams and athletes, it was hard to get people to come back regularly because people would go watch a video because they're into that team or they're into that athlete, but then they would just disappear. So by doing something a bit more consistent, like sports videography or just vlogs about us working behind the scenes, it made it made it well my idea anyway was that people would be coming back a bit more consistently to see what we're doing what we're up to things like that and um and yeah so so basically from 2018 i'd say late 2018 that's when i started really focusing on 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 youtube itself and mixing you know storytelling and 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 tutorials but lately it's been heavily <laughs> uh, geared toward the, the, the sports videography tutorials because, um, well, there's many reasons for that. Uh, for Obviously, uh, COVID definitely sort of forced me that way because I didn't have access to, to any sports. But, but it's also uh, a strategic decision, I guess, to a certain extent because, um, because yeah, it, it sort of, I decided that if I was going to take the channel seriously and try to build it in a way that I can sort of make it a community and, a, and, and have people that come back every week and potentially make a bit of money so I can keep this thing going um, in a professional way, um, it made more sense to do it from the sports videography aspect than from the, the storytelling sort of documentary side of things, which I still want to do as part of the channel, but it's not going to be my main focus because it's a lot harder mm -hmm. to 
get these things done and, and, and they cost more money <laughs> as well sometimes because there's traveling involved <laughs> yeah uh, yeah and also need help sometimes. especially when you're the when you're the talent <laughs> yeah it's like okay I can speak but going to <laughs> going to get somebody is a little bit diff- difficult um, I want to talk about scaling really quick I think one thing I, I, I'm hearing you say is we I, I'd love to know a little bit more about um, you know how you scaled your business and the people that you work with or that may work with and or for you and you know that that progression from you know being possibly like an individual to now who and and how you work today yeah well that definitely sort of uh, changed a lot uh, through through the years because originally when I started my business um, I eventually well, first it was just me and it's a funny thing when you said we because I used to talk you know when you started trying to fake it till you make it kind of thing and I would say we all the time and it was just like me working in my in my living room on my laptop sort of thing and um, and but yeah eventually I got to that's a we it's you your laptop in the living room yeah true <laughs> <laughs> it worked and um, but yeah eventually I got to a point where I got a small office and then I got help because I would just hire freelancers to sort of help me when I had like a bigger project when I needed someone else or if I needed someone else to go uh, if I was already busy on the project I'd send someone to another one things like that eventually I got to the point where I had um, uh, probably a couple of full-time guys that were either editors or producers or videographers somewhere along those lines and um, but and then that's when beyond the game sort of came into the picture as well so um, the producer definitely was dedicated to, to beyond the game trying to get athletes to, to you know give us interviews and, and produce documentaries things like that um, but then what happened was that beyond the game was costing me a lot of money by doing all these documentaries and, and things and and also the business side of things was sort of because sports videos were becoming such a big thing that you know on the way up everybody's coming to me but when they're spending so much money on it then it makes more sense to just hire someone internally and do it themselves so the money was starting to sort of come down a bit and Mm. so I had to sort of readjust everything and um, so yeah I had to let go a few a few people but then eventually what happened is that I sold my business and well I got acquired basically by a business that does like sporting events, runs sporting events here in Australia, and I became sort of the creative department, if you will. So I still do the same thing from the same place, but I work for uh, uh, a company, and um, that's called Max Events. So, so basically now I'm I'm an employee at that at that company. I don't really have employees that work for me, but. From the beyond the games perspective, I still kept uh, a virtual assistant, so she she helps me with all sort of my social media stuff and and like recently, like I said, like we just revamped everything, we just changed the website, so she was very involved in the new website and you know designing everything, and she helped me with the logo and she helps me with the the little promos uh, little short videos that you would see like on Instagram and things like that and um, yeah so from beyond the game perspective I still have someone working for me but um, every, everything else I'm, I'm part of a bigger company now and I, I like the fact that you know I think some t- sometimes people when they, you have your own business and you go back to another company that sometimes people can try to shame you a little bit to be like well you were your own business person and now you're working for somebody else again but honestly when you're finding like a really good situation and you can reduce like the hassle and the stress there's nothing wrong with like being an employee especially if it's something that you know you're you're doing that you love and that you appreciate like if I could find my I don't want to say perfect if I could find my ideal situation and I could just show up do what I do and leave and not have to comb through all these other things and make sure you know things are, are, are all put together like like that's great so can like you know as we as we wrap up can you tell us about that acquisition one and like maybe what your mind frame was before you said okay great okay this makes sense like you know I am going to you know allow myself to be acquired and then I am I'm in a position to where I'm fine with being an employee maybe again or in for this particular company or the situation yeah, well, yeah, it was a very interesting time for me because um, 
um, yeah, the people who were working for me, I had like two guys working full time for me and they were friends. Like they're, they're people that I met as friends. Well, actually met them at the first job that I mentioned earlier. So, and we, we remained friends and I eventually hired them. And, and I'm getting at a point with my business where I'm, I'm struggling to, to, to pay them on time. And, and I hated that. Like, I don't want to be that guy. And, I, and, and yeah, they've got families, they've got lives, and, and I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be an asshole. Like, I don't want to be that guy. So it was like, it was, it was rough. And I'm, 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 not, I'm not a salesperson. Like, my business always been doing well because because it was great product the product was was you know selling itself so and but now because the industry had, had changed I, I, I had to become a salesperson I had to sell myself and really sort of and I was had I'd have to spend more time doing that than doing what I actually enjoy doing which was also rough for for me so when my biggest client at the time sort of approached me with the idea of acquiring my my business um to be honest like at first because he, he had done it like at the very earlier at early stage of our of our relationship and i turned him down back then but um at that point it made sense for him because he was trying to grow that uh, grow and and i was it made sense for me as well for the reasons i just mentioned and and, and also because that way it goes back to what I was saying about how I was having a job that helps me support what I do. It was basically now I get, I don't have to worry about the money. I don't have to worry about anybody's future. I get my steady paycheck, but I'm still doing what I want to do. And I still have, because he, he was okay with the whole beyond the game thing. He was actually involved in it. So, um, so yeah, I can still sort of do beyond the game, do my thing. And it's a win-win. And not, not only that, but the jobs are sort of, the job is helping beyond the game because it, it allows me to go behind the scenes at all these different events and and because um, at the time we thought it was still in the period where beyond the game was sort of becoming like transforming into what it is today but we thought maybe beyond the game could become like a, a bit of a almost like a PR sort of thing for the company where I'm doing all these behind the scenes videos so therefore it shows what the company is doing mm. what we're up to things like that um, as my channel became a lot more sort of American sports focused, like in less Australian focus, it, it sort of didn't really pan out the way we thought it, it would. But um, but you know, like anyway, I, I still sort of ended up filming a lot at soccer games and rugby games here in Australia and basketball games and stuff. So it it was there was a great synergy between the two basically. So for me, it was a, a, a dream sort of scenario as long as the you know the, the money was right and everything. I was like, well, I I ran, ran it past my wife and and my accountant and they were both like, yeah, I think it's a pretty good idea. <laughs> so I was like, all right, let's do this. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I want to be a respecter of your time, um, and but I want to make sure that we continue to get those gems that you've been passing out during our time together thus far. So if you had three tips that you can give anybody, um, whether it just be for general you know, encouragement and knowledge or individuals who are looking to specifically be in that sports world, um, what would you tell them? Well, if we're talking specifically sports, I would say first of all, don't um, don't think that you're better than filming like you know kids or low level sports, or whether it's high school or whatever it is. Um, that's how that's how you practice. First of all, that's how you get better, but that's also how you make contacts. That's how you you network. That's how you meet coaches, parents, all sorts of people who can potentially get you. In, in different places, uh, different places, and, and as you're doing it, you're practicing, you're getting better. So yeah, don't think that you're gonna go from just going to school to working in the NBA. Like there's steps, and yeah, we all gotta go through them somehow. Um, another one would be to start a portfolio, whether it's an Instagram cha or YouTube channel that you dedicate just to your work. Or don't put your personal stuff in there. Um, but yeah, you can build that up so that way it's easy for people to either just randomly discover you or at least you can send them there and it's easy for them to have a quick look and say, oh yeah, that person knows what they're, what they're talking about and, um, and sort of go from there. 
and another one also would be to just don't don't be scared of of opportunities like that's that's always been a big thing for me as well like i've never turned down an opportunity even if i didn't know like what i was what i was doing like i'll just say yes especially at the beginning like uh, you just say yes and then you figure it out like because uh, opportunities because I, I started like I said, when I started in television like I had no contacts didn't know anyone my parents you know no, no they still don't really understand what I do for a living like we're two different worlds so I you know I had no contacts nowhere to go so any small little glimpse of an opportunity that could potentially get me closer to where I want to like I started as a driver for a production company just to give you an idea so that's you know whatever opportunity that presents to you just jump on it make the most of it and um and yeah don't even if like the driver thing is is one side of it but the other side is being approached by someone that's like i've been approached by like Celine Dion's manager for example to do something for and i'm and even like working at the montreal canadians like for me it was like well like what if i mess up you know like i'm i'm not ready for this like i'm looking at their, their videos right now i don't have any idea how to do this how to replicate this so like if i show up they're gonna you know i'm gonna be a huge disappointment but but I'm not going to say no, though. Like, I'm still going to try. I'm going to show up, and I'm, I'm going to try to prepare as, as, as well as I can, and, and I'm going to try. And worst-case scenario, they shut me down, but at least I had a shot, and I'm back where I started, but with a little bit more experience. So, so yeah, that's how I approach everything, really. Just go for it and, and try to prepare as well as you can, and whatever happens, happens. Nice, nice. Last question. What is next for you? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not 100 percent sure to be honest. Like uh, I think for 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 now, anyway, I'm definitely with with COVID sort of finally starting to show us. Um, well, fingers crossed, because like, we were technically I'm still in in lockdown at the moment. Um, we're coming out of lockdown this Friday, so um, but yeah, that happened before and then we went back into it for like three months so I'm, I'm yeah that's what I mean by fingers crossed but um but yeah hopefully we go back to a certain normality over here and I can start because it's already started now like I'm getting a lot more requests for for videos and stuff on on the business side of things so um so if that picks up first of all that's great but also it gives me a lot more opportunities to to go back to doing what I really miss which is doing like behind the scenes stuff or beyond the game doing documentaries doing stories because i've been doing a lot of tutorials and and i, I like it because especially i get a lot of feedback from people saying how helpful it is so i'm happy about that but i also want to do creative work which i've been sort of yeah I, I haven't really been doing much of it in the last year and a half even i'd say almost two years now so i'm so i'm really looking forward to to getting back into that and one of the things that sort of happened recently when I posted a video where I basically just talk about this about how I'm coming out of COVID now and I'm excited about the future and I want to do creative things and and a lot of people have reached out to me and 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 yeah told me that they would be happy to get involved some way somehow so I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way that you know if there's someone in Florida that can help maybe I can get something going over there and, and that person sort of handles it and then you know someone else in new york or whatever and we sort of all come together and, and create something so that's what where my head is at at the moment trying to figure out how as a community we can try to build content together that will make the channel not just about me doing my little thing in, in melbourne mm -hmm. australia but more about where sports videography is at as a you know, as an industry, like it's just not just what I do, it's what we do and, and how far we can take it. That's the dream. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And, and, and it's fine. Like, you know, even even when you talk to people and they'll be like, what's next? They'll be like, no, I'm fine. Like, <laughs> exactly where I, I met somebody one time and, you know, she was speaking about um, people wanting her or encouraging her to apply for this promotion in her job. And she was like, no, I'm good. I, I love what I do. I'm good at it. And I'm going to stay here. So, you know, you have, you know, other aspects of it to where you don't always have to aspire to mm. do more and to want more and, you know, and things of that nature. So I appreciate your answer. Like it's it's a it's a it's a it's a progress. <laughs> you're, you're taking your time and sometimes it's forced by lockdowns. Yeah. But other times it's just, you know, there's there's patience and 
and there's um there's purpose in, in being patient as well. Yes. So I want to thank you for everything that you shared thus far. Um, it's been really insightful for myself as well. Um, I'd love for you to share all of the places and spaces that people can follow and support you and learn more from you. Um, yes. Well, I think the, the simplest um, way to do this is like if you want to watch any of my content, any of my videos, um, the, the Beyond the Game channel on YouTube is the the place to go. And if you want to reach out to me, um, I'm what's called on, on Instagram, Beyond the Game as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you really look for Beyond the Game on on um, on Instagram or on Twitter as well, you can just reach out to me directly uh, that way. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, we've got a fa Well, yeah, I should probably, <laughs> sorry. The, we've got a Facebook page, but more importantly, we've got a Facebook group, which is a sports, it's called the Sports Videography Community. And, um, and yeah, like I mentioned earlier, there's like uh, almost 4,000 people in there and it's all sports videographers from, from all levels. So there's experts, but there's also tons of beginners who just go in there and, and share their content and ask for feedback or they just ask questions and people help. We all sort of help each other out. And, um, and yeah, it's a really cool, really cool group to be a part of, especially if you're starting in, in sports videography. Um, yeah, you could always join, it's free. and. It's a good source of uh, help and advice. Thank you. I will tag all of that below. And I can attest to the fact that he is responsive, ladies and gentlemen. I reached out to E about maybe a week, maybe a week and a half ago. And here we are. <laughs> and we're having this conversation. And I'm super, super excited and thankful for, for this opportunity. A lot of times when you see people online, they're like, oh, you know, contact my secretary or things of that <laughs> nature but he responded to me <laughs> and so I'm, I'm, I'm ever so grateful for that uh, well um, I said so I told you who's been listening I hope do you remember like I think I wrote I, I read your message I think I just wrote yeah I watch your show uh, I like the content I like the host I mean like to me it's that it's that simple and um and yeah and also I want to say I was, I was impressed by the show but I've I also been impressed by the way like what happened after like you I, I accepted the invitations because the whole not only your show itself, but the, the whole way you go about it and you prepare it and everything. It's really like very professional. I've been involved in a few podcasts and this is definitely one of the most professional ones I've seen. So like, yeah, good job on that one. That's, that's not, like, don't make me <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Well, everybody, thank you so much for listening. I hope that you uh, have been taking notes and that you got some value that you will follow beyond the game wherever that they go and support E and all of his social channels. If you are a unicorn yourself or you know anybody else that is a unicorn that I can have a conversation with, I'd love for you to link them below. Um, and also if there's any other topics that you'd like to have me discuss, I'd, I'd love to, to continue to facilitate that. Um, this is one of the things that when people say, find that thing that you'll do for free, this is, I'd love to make some money from it, but you know, this is one of those things I'd love to do for free. So thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next time.